Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our series of live virtual tours. My name is Sterling, and I will be here to ensure you all have a smooth trip. Today, we have Tom Tom, who is our Chief Experience Officer, taking you all on a tour through the highlights of Thailand. We're going to get started here in just a moment, but first, I want to get the conversation started as we give people a few extra minutes to log in. So let us know in the chat who you are, where you're from, and maybe what's at the top of your bucket list for things to see and do in Thailand. And as you do that, make sure that you're posting to all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your comments. So welcome. We have Mary from Toronto, a few Canadians joining us. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, and just to kind of clarify, if you uh, to post to all panelists and attendees, when you're going to type out your chat message, uh, just above that, you'll see two panelists, I think is the default. You can just switch that to panelists and attendees. So we've got a few more Canadians. I love it. Uh, I'm up here in Canada, so I'm, I'm happy to see some people here. Um, we've got Scott from Minnesota. Uh, we have uh, Lillian from Sweden, all right, love to see it, uh, from Germany, Philadelphia. Oh, amazing, getting people from all over the world. Very, very exciting, everyone. Okay, so what is everyone um, excited to see in Thailand? Have, have you guys been to Thailand before? Um, is, not that you're going right now, but is this sort of your first time to see things from Thailand? Let's see. Oh, uh, Maria has been to Thailand three times. All right. Love to see all of this chatter coming in. Um, so I think we are ready to get started here. So once again, everyone, uh, my name is Sterling and I'll be your host for today. <clears throat> but you guys aren't really here to see me. You're here to see our amazing CEO, Tom Tom. I'm going to pass it over to her in a second, but first a few notes on how this tour will work. So as Tom Tom is giving her tour, you'll have a chance to stay in touch with the group via the chat box. You'll also have the opportunity to, opportunity to ask questions directly to Tom Tom using the questions button at the bottom of the screen. So some of these questions we'll be able to respond to in the chat, but for those that need the real local expert, we'll have the opportunity to ask Tom Tom directly throughout the tour. So feel free to chat, engage, ask questions, just like you were on a real tour. Now, speaking of that tour, today Tom Tom will be showing us the Bangkok to Chiang Mai Express Plus trip. This tour is part of our Travel with Confidence Plus collection, which means that it has a smaller group size, private rides everywhere we go, cheaper my own room add-ons and more. So for those of you that are looking for a little extra confidence in your return to travel, this plus collection goes that extra physically distanced mile. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to TomTom Tom as we begin our trip through Thailand. Take it away, TomTom. Tom. Hello everybody, this is TomTom. Tom. Greeting from Thailand, Sawadee let me share you my screen and you can actually see what I'm looking at right now. So we are here in Thailand. Today we are traveling Bangkok to Chiang Mai Express. So um, it will be started from Bangkok traveling our way up to the Northern Thailand. So the, today the tour we are starting to traveling to four different kingdoms started from Bangkok and then we will drop by to Kanchenaburi, one of the historical sites and also then Ayutthaya, our old capital city, also um, Sukhothai, it's also our first capital city of Thai kingdom as well and then we were traveling our way back to Chiang Mai and at the moment I'm in Chiang Mai so my name is Tom Tom I am your CEO today and I'm running the trip from Chiang Mai so let's start it here we go we are in Bangkok 
So let's start it with our tuk-tuk ride in Bangkok. When you arrive to Thailand, this is a common vehicle that you're going to see all over colorful um, tuk-tuk. And I'm also dressed up colorful today as well. So here it's a little wheel of Bangkok and also coming with Bangkok name as well. So I'm not sure that you know Bangkok have a longest capital city name of the world, which is written here. Krung Thep Mahanakorn Amon Ratana Kosin Mahintara Yutaya Mahadilo Popnoparat Rashadhani Buri Rom Udom Rashani Wed Mahasathan Amon Piman Awatan Satisakatiya with the new Grombasit. The meaning of this Bangkok name is City of Angel, Great City of Immortal, Magnificent City of the Night Gems, Seat of the King, City of Royal Palace, Home of God Incarnate, directed by Wisawa Kamen at the Indra Behes. So um, when you arrive to Thailand, of course, you can check in with this super long name and get everyone curious, like, where was that about? So when you first day arrive to Bangkok, Commonly, our hotel accommodation, sometimes we are nearby the Chinatown area. Let me show you a little bit. This is the Chinatown Street. During the day, you can see a lot of Chinese writing here. They are famous for the gold shop, so it's really rich state here. Um, apart from the gold shop, you can find a lot of like Chinese herb and souvenir and everything around this area. One of the busiest area in Bangkok, as you can see, lots of cars. Night time after the group meeting, we can go to excursions around the street. This area you can see, night time will be fully, they'll even block the side of the road. There will fully Thai people come to queue up and buy many different street food in area. Um, so the street food will have a lot of the kind of the street food. They will have some sweets, some savory, and good thing about the food they're selling around this area, they always serve in a small portion, then you can have chance to try a lot of them. Next day, we are going to taking our boat trip around the canal. Um, in the old day, Bangkok used to call Wenis of East because we have a lot of canal. Today we will uh, walk into the pier, getting on the long tail boat. As you can see, this long boat have a coming with a very, very colorful color. And then when you are traveling on the long tail boat, then you can see this is a long tail. It's linking to the engine of the boat. These boatmen are controlling his boat and then he have to lean all the way to making a turn so it's kind of like fun trip after the excursions around the canal already we will reach back to Jiao Praya river and you will see the scene of Wat Arun so uh, Wat Arun it happened to be after the fall of Ayutthaya in the 1767 to Burr Mies, which is now a day you call it Myanmar, right? So King Taksin moved the capital city to Tonburi. He was cruising down the river and when the sunrise uh, happened around this area, he decided to build the royal palace nearby Wat Arun. Wat Arun also means Temple of John as well. The highlight of this temple is the Prang or the pagoda in the concourse style. So this one is 82 uh, meter high. Sometimes they are allow you to walking up to this level. In the old day, I've been up to this level. It's really a beautiful scenery to looking over Jiao Praya River as well. After that, we were getting off our long tail boat, have a little walk to we're sitting Wat Po. You might be new it's as Wat Po, but Wat Po have a full name as Wat Che Tupon Vimon Mankalaram, but you don't have to remember that. It doesn't go on your exam. As long as you know Wat Po, we're in the same page. In 1780, King Rama I moved the capital from Tonburi, which is on the other side of the river, across the river to Bangkok. This is the royal palace and build a grand palace nearby Wat Po area. Wat Po are start building on the 1788 in order of constructions and renovation. Um, also, the king decided to move the Buddha image from the abandoned temple in Ayutthaya period of time, Sukhothai period of time, and also other sites in Thailand to places in Wat Po when he renovated this temple as well. 
The temple complex is the public center of learning. We can also say Wat Po is the first open university for Thailand. It's also the center for the traditional Thai massage as well. After we walking around excursion, the temple area and you get tired, you can have chance to try the Thai massage in Wat Po as well. It's the original place to try. So the first building we are going to visit, it's been built in 1832 by King Rama III. Um, this one is the reclining Buddha. So the reclining Buddha is 15 meter high and 46 meter long. This one is the longest reclining Buddha in Bangkok, but it's the second longest in Thailand, but well, it's one of the most beautiful Buddha image. The feet of the Buddha are three meters high and 4.5 meter long and inlaid with the mother of pearl divided in 208 panel displaying the auspicious symbols such as the flowers dancer white elephant and tiger behind the reclining buddha are 108 bronze metal Bowl. You also may do some donation, get a little bowl of coin, and you can making a dropping of the coin while you are meditating. The people doing it as they believe to bring a good luck or the good fortunes into your life when you are visiting the temple. Next, we are walking out to see they have a lot of many JDs in this temple, but the main four group of this JD is each 42 meter high. So the first one are built by King Rama the first. You can see this green one here. The king uh, moved the Buddha image from Ayutthaya. The Buddha image as one of the beautiful and important Buddha image named Si San Peshadayan. And then because of the Buddha image uh, being burned and damaged, too hard to renovate it, he decided to build this JD cover the Buddha image and place it here. Later on, when King Rama III renovated the temple again, so he decided to build another two JD, one for King Rama II, the white one over here, um, and another one, the yellow one here, for himself. Then later on, King Rama V, he also built another pagoda or the JD behind here, the blue one, but this one in different pattern, copy the style of the uh, JD in Ayutthaya called Si Suryo Thai JD, and it's in the blue one. When you're walking around the temple area, these temple are the most pagoda or the most JD in Thailand because they are contain 99 JD. As you can see here, this one called Prat JD Rai, it's the smaller size of the pagoda and there are contain ashes of the royal family. This one is the Rishi Daton, or you might be no hermit exercise. So in the old day when we are collect the knowledge about the uh, uh, Thai massage, so we the king are also order to build the bronze statue of the hermit massage himself around the temple area as well in the different pose. It seems to be quite hard to do that. Maybe this one is easier for you to try. But if you can't do it yourself, of course, a massage shop uh, next door is always available for you. Um, before we move on to the next town, anyone have any questions? We are going to leave Bangkok shortly. Um, yeah, actually, just a question that came in from Herman. Um, uh, just a question about safety. So in Bangkok, are there any parts where we should be extra careful um, or maybe should just avoid in general? Actually, not really. In Bangkok, I find it's really, really, really safe. I've been traveling around, but normally it will be common sense. You were not going in the dark alleyway by yourself. Apart from it, the rest of the area is fine, really. And also the area where our hotel located, uh, close to the city center, easy to walking around the area, or we can take a vehicle like tuk-tuk or taxi to the different part. But it's really common, seems to be like everywhere you're not walking around in the dark alleyway by yourself. That's great to hear. Thanks, Tom Tom. So any more questions before we move to the next city?
Uh, no, I think that's it for right now. Okay, if you were ready, we are going to traveling our three hour west to Bangkok. What's the name of the city is Kanchanaburi. So for all the remnant of war history in Thailand, today Kanchanaburi are probably the most well-known war related attraction site. So this is the first stop we are going to visit. This is overlooking view of the River Kwe Bridge. The River Kwe Bridge is an important historical site. It is the most important bridge on the Death Railway. Built during the World War II, Japanese Army recruits 61,700 Allen's prisoner of war, including British, American, Australian, Dutch, and New Zealand soldiers, joined the large number of the Asian workers to construct the railway line to Burma. The route must cross the River Quay. That's why the bridge are so important. The bridge over the River Quay took only a month to build and officially open to use on December 1943 and the bridge wasn't last that long. So on November 1944, it was bombed heavily by the islands and several times the bridge, are, a middle part of the bridge are broke down to cutting all the train line. And later after the war end, the Thai government bought it from British government and repair the new square iron shape on the 1946 and operated the historical train route from Tonburi station to Namtok station. The distance is about 200 kilometers long and these trains are running two times a day. Next, we are going to visiting the dead Railway Museum to give you a little bit more um, information about the World War II. In this museum have tons of collections of the story about how the people are building this train track. The Thai Burma uh, Railway, also known as the Dead Railway, is about 415 kilometer long. The railway is started from Ban Bong in Thailand to Tan Sayas in Burma. The distance in Thailand is 304 kilometers and remain 111 in Burma. After Enter the Second World War in December 1941. Japan forced quickly overrun uh, most of the Southeast Asia. In 1942, in order to find shorter and more secure line to supply between Burma and Siam to Japan, decide to use the prisoner of war and civilian labor to build the railway to construct begin in June 1942, working towards each end and the project are complete on December 1943. And these projects uh, cost life of approximately uh, 15, 15 prisoners of war and 100,000 civilians. And the result, because of the sickness, exhausted and mistreatment and malnutrition. So it's really sad story over here. After you visiting the museum, you can also walk in nearby to visit Ganshanaburi War Cemetery. So they are really peaceful area and you can walk in around and give the respect for the people who died from the war. There are 6,982 prisoner of war buried here, mostly Australian, British and Dutch. You can walk in around and they also uh, grave the name in each grave. You can walk in around and have a look. Next, after all the sad history, we are going to place that more exciting, fun and get wet. Guess where we're going? We're going to the waterfalls. It's Era One National Park. Come on, waterfalls. There we go, beautiful waterfalls. It's not only one, there are seven of them. Um, Erawan Waterfall, located in Erawan National Park, founded in 1975, covered the area of 550 square kilometers. Let's start walking up to the waterfall. This is the beginning, from the beginning to the top, level it's seven levels so on the top it's from the beginning to the top is 2.2 kilometer long the walking is around 45 minutes walk and for the waterfall it in different 
different level is about 100 to 400 meter above the sea level. You can see this is the place where you can actually swim and look like a emerald color because of this is the limestone mountain area so that's why it makes the color of the water are beautiful and it's really good it's not slippy at all you're walking a little bit more up this is the third level of the waterfalls so from above this level you're not allowed to bring any food or any uh, plastic bottle all the way up to the uh, seven falls so what you could do is nearby they have a park rancher area where you must leave your bottle there or if you are insist to bring your bottle of water with you you have to pay the deposit and to be make sure that you are bring your plastic bottle back to the bottom to not leave it in the jungle or if you don't want to go all the way up and want to spend more time to swim in this clean uh, pool here you can also can as well and also you can see local people already waiting for you here swimming in the full costume in the blue and pink um, they're wearing a full clothes when they are swimming because it's not common for Asian people to be wear bikini and jump in the water and swimming so basically um, but you're allowed to wear your swimming suit to swimming this area as long as you wear some clothes when you are walking around. So we are fine with that. In Kanchanaburi, apart from like the historical site and also waterfall, another famous one from Kanchanaburi is gemstone. So the gemstone that happened in this area is they will have uh, sapphire, topaz, and jasper. So they are main stone that we are finding here. And if you are interested to buy when we are visiting the River Quay Bridge, they have a lot of souvenir shop there where you can buy some, but make sure you know what you're doing because I, you can't rely on me. I just think it's just the stone with the color, but you need to know what you are buying. Or if you think, oh, it's just a little wee souvenir, it will be a great one to buy and take home as well. Before we moving to the next city, anyone have any questions, please? Uh, yeah, we've got a few questions coming in. Um, one that I'd like to ask from LaShawn is, um, at Erewhon Falls, how deep is the water? And uh, I would, I'll add to that, do you need to be a strong swimmer to go for a swim there? Ah, the water, it depends. They have many different levels of water because it's nature. It's not a pool, that man-made pool. It can't be um, adjusted the same level of the water. They have some shallow part, some deep part. Some people can even jump in. But if you're going to jump in the waterfall, make sure you jump in on your feet, not put your head down because it might be cause a lot of accident and um oh what's the other questions apart from how deep the water is um well that that one actually just came in so we've answered that um otherwise i, I think that we can probably move on and the rest i can just kind of answer in chat here oh okay okay sorry about that mm -hmm. and okay i'm just really exciting still exciting now this <laughs> is the first trip that i've run <laughs> okay everybody let's move on to the next city so the next city it's three hours away from Kanchanaburi, but it's only two hours from Bangkok because we are traveling to the side, to the west side, and then we're traveling back to Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya was the old capital city of Kingdom of Siam, as you know now today is Thailand, right? And it's an international trading port from 1350 until by Burmese on the 1767. The ruin of the old city now is from a Ayutthaya historical park and archaeological site that contained palace, Buddhist temple. The park is located on an island between three rivers here. So this is Jao Praya River, this is Pasak River, and this is Lopuri River. So the city, the old city, when we are built, always surrounding by the water, sometimes only the water, sometimes water and the mole for protecting the city. So when we arrive here, we are going to visit um, the first temple we're going to visit at Wat Mahathat. Wat Mahathat is the temple of the great relics. So Wat Mahathat was constructed in 1374 by King Baromara Shatirat I, the last prang 
over here, it's already a uh, breakdown, but was built to enchant the Buddha relics. When you're walking around the temple, there were several buildings, and you can see the constructions around this period of time. We use a lot of brick because of the location of the city is surrounding by the river. We have a lot of sticky clay, and it's easy to make as the material to making the brick. That's why a lot of constructions around the temple is the brick. In this temple, this is the spot that where the most photo had been taken. This is the head of the Buddha image embedded in the root of Banyan tree. So um, the story about this Buddha image is in the old day after the Tao got abandoned and the treasure hunter or oh, they literally have a few stories so it could be like just the buddha head was fall off and the tree are grow cover that already or another story that the people are room about because of the city are abandoned when building the town at the time uh, ayutthaya were really uh, rich and then they have lots of gold and gems and everything so they are always buried um the like the valuable stuff inside the temple so the treasure hunter her know the city are abandoned and they're looking for some uh valuable stuff and also they're taking some buddha image but because of something happened to them they can't just take the buddha image and they leave it there and they later on the tree growing and leave the buddha image up there that's why it become a very very unique that the tree grow over around the buddha heads and often we take a group photo over here. After this temple, we are going to walk a little bit next door to the temple next to Wat Mahata. This is one of the beautiful temple nearby as well. This temple was built in 1424 by King Baromaraj the II as the memorial to his older brother. When the King Intarasha the I died, his two older sons are traveling the way to the capital, fighting each other, and they die during the fight. So then the third son of the king, Prince Sampaya, become the next king on turn. And then he built Wat Rajaburana on the spot where his two older brother were cremated. This one is the pagoda that he built for memories for his older brother. In 1956, the crypt of this Rashaburana was looted and many precious artifacts as a royal regalia gems and Buddha image were stolen and thief were caught and after after that, the treasure are uh, recovered. A year later, the art department in Thailand start to excavation, restoration the temple, and they find a lot more priceless objects. And now a day, the um, all the gems and all priceless stuff are exhibited at Chao Sam Praya National Museum in the same place. And after we sitting the temple, let me show you a little bit highlight of the thing that you must try when you are in a UTR. Hopefully, um, you have a sweet tooth. So this is roti candy. So roti candy are made out of the rice flowers. And then the middle part here, you can see here, this is the cotton candy. The cotton candy are made of pure sugar with the corn syrup. And they were just like spinning them until it's all shredded. And we put it at the middle of the rice paper. They roll them up and eat them as the snack. I'm not sure you think it's a healthy snack, but it's really, really delicious. After we try some sweet, let me show you a little bit of savory famous dish from Ayutthaya as well. You call, uh, we call it Goi Tiao Rua or the Ayutthaya boat noodle. It's coming in the boat shape bowl as well. This is not common. I was, I'll just create it for you to see and make sense to see this. You can see this style of the noodle. In Thai, Goi Tiao is really common dish. It's like a fast food. You probably eat burger. We eat Goi Tiao, right? So Goi Tiao is the name of the noodle. The noodle soup could be um, coming with the rice noodle, vermicelli noodles, or yellow noodles, thick noodle. But the special of the soup here, you can see this thick soup is contain a lot of spice and blood. So that's why it's so thick. It's serving with the pork and liver and um, 
pork bowl, but it also can be a choice of the beef as well, coming with some fresh vegetable as well. I hope you're not too hungry. I think in uh, some of us are probably lunch time. For me, it's night time already, but I'm still hungry. Um, before we move to the next city, anyone have any question, please? Yes, uh, I have a question from Christina. Um, what are the temperatures like and what is the best time of year to travel? To Thailand, right? To Thailand, so yeah. The best time to traveling to Thailand, it will be suggest to come during October to February because it's the coolest time of the year. We can call it high season during those time. Um, coolest time of the year, we call it winter. For us, it's cold, but for you, probably not. For the coldest, where I'm living in Chiang Mai, it could go down to 9 or 10 degrees, but it's probably just like a quick wave for just only one week. But if you come the winter it will be the same like your summer i would say so and it's the best time to come but generally thailand can come all year around it depends on where you were traveling to awesome and actually we had a question just come in from sarah which is i think is a great question uh with this um uh bowl of food on display here um are there any vegetarian or vegan options uh for travelers that may have um different uh, preferences? Yes, of course, Thai food, most of them, it's not already made. So basically for Thai food, it's really easy to be made for the vegetarian choices, but these, these certain kind of noodle soup will be too hard to make as a vegetarian, as you know, they are, uh, the noodle soup, usually they're making the stock before they are mix it all up together, but for Thai food, of course, you will have a lot of alternative choice of vegetarian, except this one, because it's contained blood. So it can't be vegetarian. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Okay. So next city. So we were moving from one kingdom to another kingdom. So this is, we were counting as our first um, kingdom of Siam. So Sukhothai Historical Park, you can see this area. So it was the former capital city of Sukhothai Kingdom during 13th to 15th century, which was found by King Si Interacted. Sukhothai is the birthplace for the Thai culture and Thai alphabet by the great King Ram Kampang as well. Sukhothai, the word itself also means dawn of the happiness as well. So the people who are living in this kingdom seems to be very happy uh, always. So this is a temple and also temple um, in this historical park, it's quite big area. So we're going to excursion by the bicycle. I wish everybody can ride the bicycle. If um, you are ready, so let's go to visiting some temple. The reason that we have to go by bicycle, as you can see, this is 1.6 kilometer long. This is two kilometer wide. So it's really big area. So today we're gonna making a few stops to show you quickly this historical park. First, I'm gonna taking you to Wat Mahathat again. So you remember we just visited Wat Mahathat a few minutes ago. And once again, this is also the same name. You probably like um, think why it's have the same name. In every kingdom that we built, always have the uh, temple called Wat Mahathat. Also, it's mean temple of the great relics. It's always contained the Buddha relics at the middle part of the temple as well. Wat Mahathat was found by King Si in Teratit around the 13th century. This is Sukhothai style of the Buddha image. That's different from the other period of times is always. It looks gracious appearance and slightly smile on the face, mostly meditating or subduing Mara positions. And you can see 
uh, Sukho Thai Kingdom, we use a lot of this kind of like stone, or you might be not know what it is. It is the laterite. Laterite is the soil that we can find not too far from the historical park. It's around 26 kilometers away from the historical park. It's the big source that we can find this laterite stone. So basically, it really, really soft when it stay underneath the ground. So you will have to dig it up, shape them into the circle or square and cut them up, bring it up into the air. And then when it dry, it become very, very hard and last long time because the latter light are contain, uh, contain the iron oxide. So that's why it's so hard and strong. You can look over here. This is the main JD. Uh, it was built in 1345 to enshrine the Buddha relics. The JD on the top of the JD is the lotus bud. Is the character for Sukhothai architect style. So only happen in Sukhothai. On the bottom or on the base of the JD, also decorated with the circle of the walking Buddha. This is also Sukhothai style only as well. You only can find this kind of architect in Sukhothai. Next, I'm going to taking you to making another stop. This is the oldest temple in uh, Sukhothai Historical Park. We believe this tree park was been built by the Khmer Empire uh, around late 12th century, and they are uh, abandoned the area until the King Si interacted, took over the area and he converted the temple from the Hindu temple into the Buddhist temple later on. And before we leave Sukhothai, let me show you a little wee snack that you can find uh, famous in Sukhothai. So this one we call Tua Tart or the Thai fried peanut, but it's not only the peanut you can see. This is peanut and this white bit we call Gloy. Gloy is the YM, but this one it's poison if you doesn't know how to make them. So basically you will take them out on the ground. It's kind of like a white, kind of like root and you slide them, fermented them, clean them and then later on you will dry them and you will mix it with flowers and some peanut deep fry them. So this is really really good with a cup of tea or coffee but because of you are traveling to Thailand we are always hot and famous drink that we do is always contain ice. So before we move on to the next city, anybody have any question, please? Um, yes, actually. So uh, previously I asked about vegetarian and vegan options. We also had a question about halal. Are you able to, do you, um, is halal something that uh, most restaurants can accommodate? They, some restaurant could be halal accommodate, but not, all of the Thai restaurant. Normally, if it happened to be the people need to have halal food, I would usually suggest that they could be have vegetarian as the alternative choice will be easier because we can't be guaranteed in every restaurant the animal could like the food could be halal, just only the certain restaurant. Okay. Um, and then we actually had a, a fun question from Herman. Now, not so much a question, more of a request. Can you teach us a few Thai words? Oh, remember when I arrived, I said here, Sawadika. This is the way of greeting in Thailand. So everybody say together, Sawadika. Ah, it's a trick I didn't teach you. The gentleman need to say crop. If you say ka, I will assume that you may become a lady boy. Mm -hmm. So, so you say crop, okay? For ready together, sawati ka. <laughs> that means hello. We usually use the word sawati for say hello and goodbye. So, um, other type word you may want to learn is thank you. It's easy. So, kap kun ka. When we say thank you, we also put the palm together as well. Kap kun ka. Kap like a cop police, kun like raccoon, and ka. Always the female added at the end of the sentence to make it polite for the gentleman use crop. Okay? All right. Perfect. Thank you. And I speak Thai really well. If you ever have chance to come in to visit us in Thailand, I guarantee you, you will have more than two words.
Awesome. Thanks, Tom Tom. Uh, feel free to continue on. Okay. After Support Thai Kingdom, we were traveling our way to the north. We're traveling around five and a half hours to Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai, um, hang on, let me show you where I'm living. <laughs> I'll show you later. Um, so Chiang Mai is um, the capital city of ancient Lanna in the old day around Chiang Mai area we call Lanna Kingdom. It's become a part of Thailand later on. So Chiang Mai was found on um, the early 13th century. So as you can see over here, Chiang Mai is the second biggest city after Bangkok. This is all big city here. And I'm living somewhere around here. You can see me? Hello. <laughs> okay, so this is the old city center. So you can see the square here. You can't see it that's so clear, but I'm gonna show you here. This is Chiang Mai Gate. Sometimes our hotel that we are staying around this area as well. So then it will be easy to know the certain area when you come to visit as well. So because of the Chiang Mai old town, it have a square shape of the old town. And there are four different Gate, oh no, sorry, there are five different gates for four different sites. So one of the gates we use it for uh, bring the dead people and all the garbage out of the old town. That's why we have an extra gate for that. And this Chiang Mai gate is, uh, we renovated them only the gate and the fort on the corner. But in the old day, this is the wall all surrounding the old city. Around this area behind this building is Chiang Mai Market. It also happened early in the morning as well. You can wake up early in the morning. You can come to do monks um, offering. Or if you're not a morning person, they also have the nighttime market as well where they have lots of food selling here. And if happened to be around Around here during the weekend so Saturday market are really nearby around this area as well um, it's like a walking street where they sell a lot of souvenir handmade stuff and everyone loves to just get lost around the market it's kind of like two kilometer long three kilometer long with like many section Thai people love the night market because it's kind of like so much fun and a lot of food to eat as well so we're going around the city as you can see here, you can still some remain wall around this area. This is the fort. On the side, this is the water all over around the canal. So the water are always there. Mm. Next, ah, here we go. This is what Prakat does to tape. This is what we are going to do. We're not taking a flight. We were driving our way from the town city center to what Prakat does to tape is about 15 kilometer long. The journey usually took about 30 minutes. Up the mountain, it will be a little bit wider road. I hope you are at the travel sick after we drive our, our way up to Wat Prata Doi Sutep already. So the two way to visiting the temple is first you were walking up here, 306 steps walking, 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 or if you don't want to walk, we also have a cable car along the side as well. The cable car station, just next door to the stair, you take the cable car and then we will meet on the top. When we reach to the top, here we go. You're going to see this white elephant. This white elephant had a name, Praya Kocha Waramongkon. So the white elephant become a really important vehicle for the kings in the old day. This temple was built by King Guna on the 1383. The story about how to build this temple. In the old days, the monk named Sumontera, he was studied the Buddhism from Sri Lanka and he's traveling his way to Sukhothai and he got the dream about the Buddha relics and then he went to found the Buddha relics and after that he traveling from Sukhothai coming to Lanna in Chiang Mai and then on the way to travel the Buddha relic have broke into pieces the first uh 
the 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 Buddha relics are in different size. They have the original size and the smaller one. They place the smaller one enshrined at Wat Suan Dog, and then the big one. Nine years later, the king decided to make a wish with the Buddha relic. Put the Buddha relics on the back of the elephant. Make a wish. Then white elephant start to walking his way up to the mountain uh, of the Zutep mountain. En route, the elephant stopped a couple times. The king also built the temple at wherever the elephant stopped as well. When he reached to the top, his trumpet three times, turned around three times, knee down, and he died. That signifies about that white elephant doesn't want to be the vehicle for anybody anymore. After you know the story of the temple already, I'm going to show you Prathat Doi Sutep. Prathat Doi Sutep is covered by the gold plate. This gold plate is 75% of gold and there are 270 kilograms of gold. When you are visiting during the daylight, when the sun is shining to the pagoda, it's also very bright and colorful pagoda to be sitting. Next, <clears throat> when you are visiting the pagoda, if you want to making some respect for the pagoda, so you can, uh, it's quite common not to sleep pagoda. When you brought the things to the temple, you will provide this set. So you will have the lotus flowers, two candle, and three incense stick ready. And then you will go to sit down next to the pagoda, or you might be called Prathat. And then when you are sitting there, so you will get it ready. So in this temple, you're not allowed to burn the incense stick because when you burn the incense stick, it causes some smoke and the smoke will go all over around the mural painting and the old mural painting could get damaged easily. So they're not allowed to burn the incense stick, but you can burn the candlelight. You start with burn the candlelight, sit down on your knee, put your palms together. Remember I taught you um, we do hello in Thailand. We put the palm together and say sawaddi, right? This is the normal one that you are greeting to everybody. So this is normally happen when you are in the standing position. You're greeting like this. And if you're greeting your parents, you put the palm together like a lotus butt, right? And then you put your thumb underneath your nose and you bow. This one for greeting your parents. And then if you want a greeting the monk, when you met the monk walking around and you want a greeting them, you put the thumb between your eyebrow and bound and also say hello, sawaddi krap or sawaddi ka. Next level, this one we're not doing that, but this is add on. After you sit down, you put your palm together here and you lift it up between your eyebrow and then you put your face down, separate it, and as you can see, these postures. After you do this, first time, second time, and third time, then you will be ready to place the flowers. So meanwhile, after you are, uh, before you um, do the three time grab, you can also make a wish as well. And after you've done this all proceed already, you can walking around and see the area. In the old day, when we provide the flowers for the temple, it could be any kind of flower. It don't have to be only lotus, but lotus is a really, really common one. The old day, they use the blossom lotus, but because of it get dry and it wasn't last that long, so the people using the lotus um, that still bloom. Today, I'm going to teach you how to folding the lotus. I already preparing the lotus here. It's coming with this one and this one and this one and this one. So I'm going to teach you how to fold. You can following the step over here. First, you can see from the pictures, if you can't see my hand, Clearly, you will fold it one time, two times, and three times. And the one time, two times, three times. And one, two, three. I could make it really fast, but it's not going to be super beautiful. I don't want to take too much time. I'm going to hop to the next one that I already started with. One, two, 
three, one, two, three. So if you fold it, like sometimes they have many different patterns of the flower that you can fold. Not only this pattern, you can Google it. I'm not sure you can find the lotus in the market where you live or not, but if you can find, you can also um, try to practicing on this, but if you cannot find, don't worry when you come to Thailand, it's really easy and common for us to to buy the lotus flowers around the market area or in the temple, they are also providing this as well. Usually we take it for offering for the monk, we not take it home. And ta -da, it's already done. Now you become an expert on the lotus flower folding. After we are do some fun already. So this one will be a unique experience for you. Normally when we are visiting this temple, we're coming in the evening for give you some chance to having these amazing moments. So what we're seeing here is the monk are getting ready. So there are preparation for do the monk activity in the evening called monk chanting. So after he give the respect for the pagoda, the all the monk will moving inside the vihara and start chanting. The chanting usually lasts about half an hour. We can sitting outside and enjoy the moment of the monk chanting if you like to. Before we moving to the town, so anyone have any questions for me, please? Um, yeah, a couple that we have here. Um, oh, so Marika asks, uh, is it mandatory to take off shoes in the temple? And uh, along with that, um, maybe you can talk about just some of uh, the cultural dress recommendations that you might have for people coming from different countries. Ah, that's really good questions. Thank you very much. When you are visiting the temple, I'm not sure you can see in the photo of um, the people who were sitting in the temple. Yes, we are taking the shoes off. And when we're taking a shoe off, not only in the temple, but mainly in this area, you must taking your shoes off because you are standing uh, higher than and the uh, Buddha relic in the pagoda. So that's the main reason that you must take your shoes off when you are visiting the temple area. But it's really, really common for Thai people to taking the shoes off when you entering the building. So mostly your house, because of our street, it's contained with a lot of dust and deceit. It wasn't like your country. You don't have many dust and the street are so clean. Um, but in Thailand, so we always wearing shoe outside the house and taking the shoes off before we are entering the house. And also the dress clothes when you are visiting the temple. You can see here we are wearing um, appropriate clothes. So you wear like proper t-shirt and long pants. But if you wear short or you're not wearing, um, like if you, you can see one of our clients here, she's wearing tank top, but she will have a scarf cover. But some place you might I not allow with the scarf, but the CEO always reminding you for what you need to wear or when the place to visit. And don't worry if you're not ready to pack home. Oh, I have just only short and tank top. In the local areas, always have the uh, appropriate clothes to buy. You have. I'm not sure that you have heard the phrases about when you are packing for traveling. So you lay the clothes on the bed, lay the money on the bed, take half of the clothes out, double the money, and you are ready to go. Look at that. You came for a tour of Thailand. You get packing advice. Um, <laughs> I think that that's uh, great for now. Um, just a note to everyone, or just a reminder, um, we are keeping track of your questions. There's a few that we're trying to answer um, through uh, text, just to not have to, um, uh, just to keep the, the virtual tour going. Uh, if we don't, if we aren't able to answer all of your questions um, online or live with TomTom, Tom, uh, we will make sure to follow up with those after the tour, just to make sure that all of your questions are met. Um, so, with that in mind, Tom Tom, do you want to continue? Okay, let's continue. So, um, after we're sitting all the temple already, uh, Tom Tom signature. So, as you can see, my chubby face, I love food. So, let me introduce you a little bit more foodie dish. So, this 
dish that I will recommend it to you is the famous Norton cuisine. So we call it cow soy. Cow soy is the yellow noodles served with the curry and topped with the coconut milk. Um, this curry could be coming with chicken or beef and of course it's alternative for the vegetarian as well for someone who vegetarian. So this is the dish that I always recommend to people when you're coming to Chiang Mai. It's great to try and everyone loves to try those dish and it's delicious. On the side, you can see here coming with the yellow, uh, crispy yellow noodles, some lime, shallot, and also pickles. So, when I'm eating this dish, I'll dump everything in here, mix it all together, and of course, we add a little bit more chili for extra flavors as well. But you, if you are a baby, so this is probably going to be enough chili for you already. Next one, let me um, show you a little bit more um, Thai famous dish. It's called green papaya salad or song tam. The green papaya salad, if you've ever been to Asia, you might be have chance to try this already. So you probably think this bit is papaya. No, it's a white bit. This white bit is papaya, but it's green outside. You peel the skin out and you chop it into the small pieces cucumber or carrot or um, mixed fruit green green apple also a good idea to making this kind of salad as well it's going really really well so after you try some savory already so let's try some thai dessert this is mango sticky rice um, the sticky rice are cooking with the sweet coconut milk and topping with the mung bean. It's serving with the mango. This will become my later dessert. After I'm doing this one, I'm gonna eat this. And if you're jealous, you know where to find me. I'm living in Thailand. And when you come to Thailand, you can also try this dish. I also made that one myself as well today. So, and another thing that I would like to suggest you to try when you come to Thailand. So this kind of fruit, I'm not sure you're familiar with. So it's a spiky fruit. So you may love it or hate it. This is the king of the fruit in Thailand. So durian. So inside the fruit, I look like this. So the durian, when you are the beginner of the durian eater, I would strongly recommend you to try it when it's semi ripe because the texture is still crunchy and the smell are not too strong. But if you tried it when it's very, very ripe, you might be not love it so much. The taste of it is like a very, very sweet custard. The texture is like a very ripe avocado. So if you come over to Asia or Thailand, so this is the fruit that you must try to get you some exotic experience. After we are showing you some fruit already, I'm going to show you a little bit more of our festival. As you're asking me, uh, when is a good time to Thailand? So if you happen to be here, when we have some big festival, it will be a great memory experience for you. So this one of the uh, festival, we call it Loi Gratong. Loi Gratong that we are doing, uh, it's happened during November. In Thai months, November is uh, month 12, but this Loi Gratong, the people are used this Gratong for thank you for the goddess of the water, Pratme Kong Ka. But um, the, we're making a little board, the base here, we use the banana tree trunks and we fold up banana leaf decorated with the flowers. We're making a little boat ready to floating down the river for uh, thank you to the goddess. And then this is our group member. They are preparing the little boat to get ready to floating as well. At the same time in Chiang Mai or in the Lanna festival, 
we call it Yi Peng. Yi Peng, it means the second full moon. So it would happen on the same full moon, different months, different times. In the normal month that we happen is November 11, right? Thai month is 12. Um, Northern um, Lana month is the second. This is the Sky Lantern Festival. During the, the same time, we are also making uh, these a uh, floating lantern by the very thin paper. We are framing it with the uh, bamboo and then we shape them up. At the middle, we have some wax and we burn them up. It gives enough power to to bring the lantern up to the sky. On During the festival, it happened in a couple of days. It will flow like 10,000 of these into the sky. And if you're not floating it up to the sky, you also can hang in this lamp. In every house, we'll hang in this lamp. And also, we will lit up the candle on the clay like this as well. So after this festival, let me introduce you another festival. This is, will be so much fun. And I'm not sure you see here, I'm wearing the very, very colorful costume today to get ready. So less than a week, it will become a Thai New Year's. And of course, I'm not get confused. It's Thai New Year. Have you heard the word? Um, Thai New Year is happened to be on uh, 13 April to the 14 April. So we call it Song Grand Festival. Um, this season is compared to your uh, festival like uh, Christmas time because these festival times, the people will go to their hometown and visiting some older fat member of family. Sometimes the people are going to work in different ways and this is the time that the member of family will come home, stay together and bring some new clothes and offer it to the older uh, member in the family and ask for giving for all years around basically more cash up and after that you're going to the temple making some merit and then you were ready to going outside and have some more fun so what you need to prepare a gun water gun not the real gun so with the water gun or with the bucket so the bucket could be any size if you were really really strong so you could also have a really large size of the bucket as well and this is me and my other CEO friends to get ready to go out and uh, playing the water fight. So we have a small bucket here contain water to refill in our little mini vini Hello Kitty gun or the bazooka gun. The bigger is the better because the water can shoot really, really far. So that's the suggestion. Don't buy a small one. You can't fight with anyone with the small one. So if you get ready, we were going out around the canal. If you remember, the old wall of the city are surrounded by the water we also use the water splashing here as well so after these in a few days we will get ready to some grand festival but don't worry if you miss it this year we still have next year for you to coming to visit us during the April and you can come to enjoy this festival but a little trick I'm not sure I mentioned in Thailand we have three season we have hot hotter and hottest make sure you drink lots of water when you are coming to thailand as well or oh, not this water though clean water okay so before the end of the end so anyone have any questions for me please um yeah we actually have a great question come in from herman who wants to talk souvenirs uh what are some authentic thai gifts that you can buy for family and friends back home the authentic Thai gift could be several uh, kind of things that you can buy. But if you want to buy them, it's always like I would suggest it could be some handmade stuff will be quite nice. When you're going to the market, they will have some Norton style clothes or the Thai clothes or some kind of like the handmade basket or it depends on who that you want to bring the gift to. When you come over to Thailand, and I'm sure that you will get more idea what to buy. And also, if you aren't sure when you actually come to Thailand, you always can ask your CEO. They know where the best place to buying stuff. Great, great question as well. Um, 
Great. Um, I think because we're, we're a little over time here, but we're doing great. Um, maybe uh, we'll just continue on. So when we come to the end, I would like to say thank you to everybody who joining this virtual tour. If I may, um, may have chance to meet you, I will be more than welcome. And I wish to see everyone soon, but now stay home, stay safe. And if you ever chance to come in to visit us in the kingdom in Thailand, we all uh, G Adventure CEO are waiting for you and ready to make making an exotic experience for you. Before we saying uh, goodbye, you remember how to say hello? Sawadika. It's the same word to say goodbye as well. You can see this little doll, this is Sawadika and Sawadika. Sawadika, kapun ka. Sawadika. Thank you, Tom Tom, and thank you all for taking the time to connect with us and join G Adventures for our live virtual tour. I know Tom Tom has given us the taste of wanderlust that we needed during this time, and we'll all be looking to book those first flights out to Thailand once we can. But for now, we will stay home, stay kind, and stay connected. Keep an eye out for more live virtual tours hosted by other CEOs from all over the world. Until then, and wherever you are in the world, have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.